Hey guys, welcome back. So I have a very special guest today. This is the professor, Paul Schmidt, and I am here in his wood shop in Costa Mesa. And I wanted to share with you a really interesting product that he's developed to get a really fun look for your woodworking. So check it out. This is a skateboards that were upcycled. So if you look at the colors here, you can see how the dyed veneer has a really beautiful look to it. Now this side is sealed. This side's raw, so you can see the color's not popping quite as much, right? So where this came from is actually came from skateboards. So there's a really cool thing going on out in the world where people are collecting used skateboards and they're taking off the grip tape, they're grinding all the paint off and the glue off and they're basically squeezing them together, right? So that's what I did here at my factory with some blemished skateboards, but I don't have to remove all that stuff. So I take them and squeeze them together. So if you see here these shapes, right? There's, there's four boards. So they're not perfectly flat, but they're near flat. And ultimately, I can take them and process them into a panel like this, where I cut it at an angle, and I call this sort of a fun house, fun house cut, because it's sort of like a, makes you dizzy, like if you were in a fun house looking at something. But you can see here Is that how- cut on a bandsaw? Yeah, okay. a really big bandsaw, 25 horsepower, horizontal, <laughs> conveyor, that type of stuff. Okay. But basically, it allows me to make a block here. So these blocks are two inches thick, mm -hmm roughly eight by 32, mm -hmm. you know, the prime best materials on the inside. So we have, this is the funhouse cut and we have a parallel cut as well. Okay. So this two inch thick block, and you could take this two inch thick block and glue two of them together and get a four inch thick block, right? And it might be like, hey, you could glue them together and you're gonna cut this into a bowl on a lathe. Right. Or you're gonna make trim for a shelf. Okay, that, would, that bowl would look really cool. Yeah. yeah. And this stuff is available. Like you have a website, I'll link it in the description. Um, so if you're interested in finding this stuff, you can get it. Or you can also go to your local skate park, pick up some used yeah, boards. Yeah, you can find enough eventually. You can find them enough. You'll, you'll get enough eventually. You can you put know? in the hard work, yeah. Um, but it takes, it takes a lot to glue them together perfect. There's a lot of experimentation. Well, I would think so, yeah. And you make stuff. In most cases, most people wouldn't be able... Normally, a skateboard has the, the kicks, right? And to and the make, bends and the curves. To get those flat without just kind of crushing it, I don't think most people would be able to do that. Yeah, they? most of the people will have like a car jack press, and mm. they don't get it perfectly flat, but they get it enough mm. to get the surfaces to suck together. Oh, okay, okay. You know? But I, I would have thought in most cases, they would just have to do it from between and there some, and there. Some people do. They're making tables, and they're only cutting this part into strips. Right. Because there's no truck holes, and they don't want truck holes in it. Right. So that ends up being part of the process too. If you I, like the truck hole or you fill the truck hole in. Right. Okay. So you know. what are you planning on doing here today? Cause he's got a project I'm going to, we're going to film real quick. Yeah. So I had a project I already glued up yesterday. So I was making a little shelf. So you see, I took some little strips of this and I, I glued them together in my clamp, you know, and now I have a piece that's, you know, 13 by 11, something like that, you know, um, near flat. I'm making a shelf out of it and it'll be a cool little shelf. Okay, one thing I was wondering is like, you were saying that it's actually quite strong that way, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, but like anything, it could fracture. Yeah, you know, if it's not. Even if you look here closely, you can see some curves in part of it and angles in part of it. That's mm. part of that near flat, not so, perfectly consistent, right. right? So you want to be careful what you do with it, but it's Yeah, well, pretty... it really depends how thick you are. Like here, we're three eighths thick mm -hmm. and that's, when you get down a quarter, it starts to get more flimsy, you know, the yeah. thinner you go, right? But right. if you're an inch thick or something, oh, that'd you be know, super strong. it doesn't matter. If you take take something like this and you're like, hey, I'm gonna try to break it. <laughs> Not happening very easy. Also, right? um, it's hard maple. I was about to ask you, yeah, it's it's this really strong wood, yeah. It's the only wood suitable for skateboards, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So here I set up a cross cut jig on my table saw. So I'm just gonna take this this material and slice it up. Nice push stick. Push stick I just made from scraps I had in the shop from something I was making. And um, what'd you do to make that those thin uh, strips well, stronger? You can see the bend and curves of the tail, nose and the tail here, and then I put a pair, a piece of cross grain in there. So there's a piece of thin veneer going this way. Right, to stop it from splitting. Right, so it wouldn't split or anything. It doesn't take much, right? Like it's 
amazingly stable. Something yeah. tells me you've got some experience laminating uh, plies of maple. A board or two over the years, yeah. I always grab something for, for making radiuses or stuff on things. It's like just a cap or something, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever looks like the right size. Whatever looks like the right size. Exactly that right there. I think that's another thing you're used to doing, shaping things to eye. Yeah, very much. That is a big skateboard. So if you look here by radius in this edge, you can see like you get a really cool look out of it as the colors wrap around. And once we clear coat that in, it will really be popping. Hundred percent solid, so nothing really evaporates. Or very little evaporates. So you see, I'm, I'm matching up the grain. They have that similar look. You do. But I didn't line it up perfect. I cut the wrong end. Mm -hmm. And that small piece is about the hardest one to keep together. Yeah. Like any idea, it's just the willingness to try. It won't necessarily be perfect. Won't necessarily come out like you envisioned it. But just make it happen. Yeah, but when it's done, it's done. Exactly that. Right there. Donor rocket release. This product sounds fun. So here's an example of one of my upcycle products. It's a switch plate. And you can see here you got some veneer going near vertical, you got some going crazy. You can this buy those on, you can buy those, right? Yeah, so I made singles in single and double mm -hmm. for toggle, and then only a single so far in the in the Lutron style. Right. I, the I, big rocker ones. Just taking note of your glasses too. Yeah, they're pretty cool. I'm not really making and selling those yet, but who knows if we'll ever get there. Those would be pretty custom. The side, you can really see the uh, see the ply. Okay. I got so, a thing, a problem with switch plates, I guess. <laughs> you like making a custom low-C switch plate. Yep. But you can't buy that one, hey? No, not for sale. Okay, so what do we got here? What are so, those things there? So these are rails. This is my original product I made as a kid. Originally, they were grab rails, so I made them slide. And um, they go in the center of the skateboard? They go on the edge of the board. On, yeah. on the bottom to either grab or slide. Okay. And they're made out of UHMW plastic, so this is cut sheet, then it became extruded half round, and different shapes as it progressed along. So it's like it's, the same cutting board, like cutting board plastic, right? Very much like cutting board plastic. Okay. Same type of material. Cool. Got that tough, durable, but you can, as a woodworker, you can work it real easy. So it's really, really cool because it table saws, sands, cuts. Right. It's super durable. So those were the original Schmidt sticks. Those were original Schmidt sticks, yep. Cool. All right, let's go see what else you've been making. So here's a bunch more of these blocks. You see, these are the funhouse cut where you can see they're cut at an angle. Mm -hmm. Here's a near parallel cut. Okay. You know, so we basically abrade those or, or cut them to their two inches thick okay. board shape. The best way to do it is actually if you slice it down the middle, and then joint it and then work from there because you know where the truck holes are. Right. Whereas if you try to cut from the outside, you don't know where, how far you're gonna go before you get to be solid clean. Mm -hmm. And you may as well use that on the outside to hold it together. Right. So we make products out of these. So here's an example of picture frames. Nice. 
So you see how the picture frame has this sort of like wackiness of the bends and yep. the curves. It's all pre-packaged, ready to go. If we look at that. So here's one where you sort of see that fun house cut where you see the angle. I swear it's perfectly square. Huh. <laughs> but it gets your eye all crooked, right? Yeah. No, I like it. And then these, these got little stands and hangers to hang them on a wall, depending on what you do. Take all the little scraps from that and we make these little tiny four by fours. Oh, I like those too. So those are really cool, mm -hmm. you know, unique looking like that. They mm -hmm. just hang on a wall. They're not really made to, um, to uh, prop up or anything. And then some of the other products we got here is coasters. We made some three and a half inch, just like soda can style, if you had a big coffee cup. Those are really nice. Here's, here's a four inch one. They got cork on the bottom. Nice. You know, so they don't slide around. They protect whatever you're protecting. Mm -hmm. you know? Other things. Oh, the switch plates. Yeah, let's see some yeah, of these so, switch so here's plates. the switch plates. So here's, here's the Lutron style or the rocker style. Yep. And Good. then here's the toggle style. I really like, like old those. Old school one. Yeah. They're recessed on the back, back side. They're also oversized in size so that you can take some damaged drywall and just cover it up with a really cool switch so, plate. So, you know, my best performing video is about repairing overcut electrical box. So now you don't need to do it. Just buy one of these. Right, just buy a switch plate big enough to cover it, you know. <laughs> and, and at Home Depot, I mean, they sell oversized switch plates this size, you know, that mm -hmm. type of thing. Those you know? are cooler. But these are way cooler, you know, mm -hmm. alive, full color. What else we got here? So we got, in case you wanted to get your fingerboard action, we got some curbs. So we got a six inch curb and a 12 inch curb. Uh, yeah, that's so if your kid is into tech decking, fingerboarding, whatever you call it, there yep. you go. Some cool there looking curbs, parking blocks. Yep. So just some examples of some products I'm making out of these upcycle blocks, but the upcycle blocks are available on my website along with the products if any of them interest you. Mm -hmm. And it's up to the creativity of the uh, the consumer. Right. the eye of the beholder, right? What, what are you going to come up with? That whole thing of, I got an idea for that, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like in my shop, it's like a lot of times I've always repaired things. My table saw has crank handles on it mm -hmm. that are made with this material. Yeah, I've seen some cool things so far. Hopefully yeah. there'll be some more after this video. Oh, I look forward to seeing what people make with it. Yeah, awesome. Worst thing about making things is sanding them. In my workshop, I always use this clear Rust-Oleum because A, you can get it at Home Depot, and it dries quick and does a good job. So watch how these colors magnify. Look at how rad it looks on this edge with the wet look, all right? It sure does. It just comes out so nice. And then it's really about getting a couple, couple layers of coating on there. And then a lot of times, I'll do something like this with a satin finish because it was sort of like a, a quick mock together and the satin finish will forgivingly not expose all my mm, like this any sanding things, swirls right? or any yeah yes. so notice here this purposely i cutting the wood i wanted to expose the truck holes but depending on how you cut the panel you could either hide them or expose them right yep so to me i like i like seeing them here i think it looks really cool it shows where it comes from So I got the back edge against something that doesn't matter. I did paint the back edge first because I do want to seal it. I don't want the moisture going in and out of it. Our maple and nanotubes act like a sponge. Soak in the moisture. So look how nice this side looks without truck holes and just seeing lines and things, right? And the other side looks rad mm -hmm. and nice having truck holes. Yeah. Contrast, right? Amazing thing. So I didn't make this myself, but my neighbor Paul does a lot of work on the lathe. I'm not really a lathe guy myself, but you can see how rad this little bowl is he's made out of the recycled skateboards. That's amazing. Those look really and cool. Here, here's a bigger bowl he made as well. So check him out on Instagram. He's Gonzo Wood Turning. Gonzo Wood Turning. Yep. But here, he, he took the truck holes and filled them with putty in this case, but look how they look like eyes. Yeah, it looks smile. like a smile, yeah. Can I see look the inside entry. of that thing? Man, that's really cool. Yeah, the organic curves and the way the mm -hmm. everything intersects is just intense, right? Yeah. 
I love it. There's absolutely a market for that. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a guy actually that's up in Canada, uh, Calgary area. Adrius, uh, I don't even know how to say the name. Martin. Guy does amazing stuff. I have to look him up on Instagram to that's get all right. his name. That's all right. So there it is. So here's just a really simple little shelf, right? This is just going to go in a corner and um, hold some stuff, you know, put a couple, you know, screws in here and here, um, a couple drywall anchors, if you know, a drywall wall. I think I'm going to be up against wood myself. So, um, but, you know, this sort plenty of poundage on here, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'd That's say, if it is. I'd say into drywall with drywall anchors, you could easily get 20 pounds on there. So also notice I put the grain orientation here to make that visual come through. Yep. Just by chance, look at the purple and pink line right here. They're lining up just about perfect. Oh, nice. How, however, it's only right there, right? And here, and then it gets worse and falls away. Yeah, you know. Um, what can but, you... but then here, you can see I took the line and made it that way. So you can't parallel. see any of that. <laughs> oh, this way, parallel. See, parallel to the top, that is. Yeah. Yep. Cool. But grain orientation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, we like book matching and there's all kinds of cabinet terms that I'll butcher and don't know that well. Yeah. Uh-huh. Cool. Yeah. Um, but guys, if you want to find, um, if you want to see some of the stuff he's regularly building with this or just uh, general skateboard related stuff, uh, he's got an Instagram. I will show it titled down there and link in the description, all that kind of stuff. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming to the shop and sharing with what I like to do with skateboards and upcycled products. I'm honored to be here. It's been really cool. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fun Thank times. you, Paul. See you guys. Later.